Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am French Chad Pearson, and welcome again to my channel. We have July 8th of 2024, 7.49 in the a.m. Happy Monday, happy Monday. Yeah, we finished the 4th of July. America's 248 years old. What will go down in relation to America? Yeah, the other day I told people it was a new birth. Let me try to explain that. It's a start of something new. Pearson, how do you know? Well, I can feel it, okay? A lot of things are lining up. The new realm arguably happened between 2019 and 2020. Something changed on the earth. And the 248 matches the number, the eclipse was August 4th. That's 4-8. So I can go down the the row of reasons why I believe everything is new. And the fight over this dominion between Trump and Biden, the second round, so to speak, means we are going into something new. Uh, project, you know, you know that number? I'll point it out to you. Project this. That should be enough for me to let you guys know something new is coming. You feel me? So, people, let's not act like we don't think that something new is happening. Something new is occurring. Okay? They also got this on the agenda. Hello? The NWO. You know they got that plan. You gonna own nothing and be happy. So, whether we, whether we, whether, what, look. I'm not going to debate it. Something new is coming. Um, I think Prince allegedly knew about it. He said in the uh, song Purple Rain, you say you want a leader, but you can't seem to make up your mind. I think you better close it and let me guide you to the Purple Rain. But, it, but it's not the R-A-I-N, it's the R-E-I-G-N. And Barack Obama years ago was overseas. I can't play that video because I got in trouble. But you remember overseas? He was talking about how uh, something new was coming because uh, no longer uh, should people uh, should be, uh, paraphrased, allowed to uh, govern, them, govern, them own, govern them their own selves. Remember that video? No longer are people able to govern their own selves that they need what? They need a leader. Remember he said people are too small-minded. Put in the, com in the comment section. There was a video out that Obama said overseas, people are too small-minded to govern their own affairs. How dare him? This is a video out, people. He literally said that. People are too small-minded to govern their own affairs. The way I interpret it, well, now you're going to need a leader. People, they have been planning this thing for a long time. Let's go down the list. We got uh, George Bush Sr., Reverend Jesse Jackson, the Pope. I've done the videos before, and I showed how all of them were trying to create this. Now, here's my point. We have a lady here. Her name, she, uh, according to reports, have made a mutual agreement to uh, leave a radio station, okay? And uh, she had asked certain questions. Her name is Andrea Lawful Sanders. Andrea Lawful Sanders, radio host. Uh, a few days ago, she interviewed uh, Joe Biden. Uh, is that the president? Yeah, she interviewed him. And uh, I guess it's safe to say she went off track and asked questions that she didn't ask, sh sh shouldn't have asked. I guess that's the best way to say it. In case you guys don't know about it, I'm gonna read it to you. But my point is that there has been a plan in place to keep information um, muffled for a while. 
So let's get into this here. Radio host who was fed questions by Biden campaign leads Philadelphia station. And I did two, what, maybe two videos, I think it was yesterday, about Biden being in Philadelphia. Now it's word, W-U-R-D, radio station said that the interview with President Biden was not up to its standards and that the host, Andrea Lawful Sanders, had resigned in a mutual decision. Really? A mutual decision. Let me tell you what I believe that's about. People, you guys know I used to work for this newspaper, the Christian Citizen newspaper, okay? I also worked for several magazines and um, people back in the day, what I can tell you is this. And by the way, I wrote about the pres presidential race that 1980. I've been doing it a long time. What I'm here to tell you is that media people know once they're in the industry, there are things that you can and you cannot do. We just know. Either you learn the hard way or your editor or your producer, the radio station, somebody's gonna pull your coat, baby. That's just the way it is. And trust me, it was bad in the 80s. I had my editor literally tell me, if the advertisers don't like it, I'm not publishing it. Now I will admit, and I've said before, that, you know, I was, I was a super hot shot back in the day, trying to get information out, especially when it came down to this here. And I had to use a little wisdom in relation to one of my editors. And later on, I appreciate that, hey, you know what? I was out front of this thing in the 80s when, when you weren't really allowed to talk about that in the media. Then after maybe 1990, it was cool. Now, why did that happen allegedly? Is because you keep secrets so you can get things done. Because if it's exposed, you might turn on it and keep it from being solidified. Do you understand? I believe the same thing happened here. This lady asked questions that allegedly she wasn't supposed to ask. And if Biden don't look right or he ain't ready for Freddie, so to speak, you can make him look bad. And anything that the power was not done through Biden or whomever is in the White House, because remember, Biden, at his age, you know he got people around him which are front and center. Look, I just say allegedly, uh, helping him craft his decisions. And, it, and by a journalist asking too much, too soon, on a time and basis when the powers say, no, don't ask this question right now, it could cost you is what I'm trying to say. Okay? And back in the day, I had, I had, I had, I remember a story, I had newspaper people back in the day tell me, I'm not printing any Christian publication. If a pastor break his leg, this is what a guy told me, an editor of a newspaper, true story. He said, if a pastor break his leg outside the church while he's shaking hands at the church, then that's a news story. Other than that, I'm not covering any more Christian perspectives. Imagine how I felt. This was in the 80s, y'all. This is in the 80s. Like I said, it's hard for me to even get a job. Check to check. Very hard, very hard. I had to pay my dues. So, shout out to this lady. Hey. So let's, 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 let's go into this. Do I believe she left on mutual, a mutual decision? No. Nah. She understand the game. And uh, when I listen to her interview, yeah, I just gotta go there, yeah, I gotta explain this thing. When I listen to her, to her interview, she said there are only four black radio stations in America. And I did a video on my own, my old show, French Shot Pearson, and I talked about how the black media don't even have a voice. 
newspaper, magazine, radio, television. Baby, we don't have, we don't, I don't even think we have 1%. If you want to know what's really going on black with black folks economically, read and check out Dr. Claude Anderson. He has said blacks have only grown one half of 1% since the Civil War. That would include communications. How are you going to have an independent voice and you don't own nothing? Because everything you try to do is filtered through somebody else. Do you feel me? So here she is working at a little, a, a small radio station, and indirectly, she got to leave a job. That stinks to high heaven. I could go on and on talking about this. So hey, give me just give, give me a break. Let, let me explain how this thing really go. The thing about me is that you get some stories from the past because of my age and my experience. This thing ain't this 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 thing of um, limiting you. Ain't nothing new in America. Ain't nothing new. Maybe because the internet is out, more people know about it now. So check it out. The Philadelphia radio station, Word, has parted ways with a host who interviewed President Biden on Wednesday using questions provided to her by the Biden administration. Ain't that something? Using questions provided by? How you gonna provide? Okay, you gonna provide. Can I ask some too? after the station said the interview violated its journalistic independence. Word said in a statement on Sunday that, quote, agreeing to a predetermined set of questions jeopardized its listeners' trust, unquote. The host, Andrea Lawful Sanders, resigned in a mutual agreement, according to Word. You think, you think? No, let me tell you what I believe would happen. In the future, baby, if you want to interview a senator or a governor or the president or anybody that I got contacts with, you better do what I tell you to do and stick to these basic questions. That's what it's about. The radio station allegedly is saving their face for the future, and now she's a sacrificial lamb. Allegedly. Miss Lawful Sanders asked Mr. Biden questions that could be considered softballs in his first interview with the journalist since his uneasy debate performance the previous week. Many observers turned, tuned into the station, which has a large black following, to hear how he would respond to questions about the debate and found that the interview did not fully address the concerns. Now she represented the black community, so I'm gonna show you later on how I addressed the black community, okay? The station said the interview questions were independently arranged by the host for her program. The source, Ms. Lawful Sanders, did not respond to a question for comment. Ms. Lawful Sanders, in a short video message posted on Instagram on Sunday, said that she tendered her resignation on Saturday. It was accepted, she said on her resignation. I mostly sincerely wanted to thank the listening audience. People, the radio station should have said, no, nah, babe, we don't want you to go. I hope that's what they did. I don't know. She told CNN on Saturday that she had received prepared questions from the White House before the interview. The questions were sent to me for approval. She said, I approved them. The Biden campaign letter clarified that it had sent the questions, not the White House. What? The Biden campaign letter clarified that it had sent the questions, not the White House. What's the difference? The Biden campaign, aren't they the White House? Oh, I, I, I need GQ to go off on this one. It is not uncommon for political com communication staff members to provide a list of suggested topics for media appearances, but Ms. Lawful Sanders' use of specific questions screened beforehand has drawn criticism. I'm done with this. Let's move forward. The Philadelphia radio host who interviewed President Biden last week has resigned from WURD Radio. 
Andrea Lawful Sanders, who hosted The Source, asked Biden four questions about what's at stake in this election. She later admitted the questions were pre-selected by Biden's campaign team. The president and CEO of the radio station says that asking those specific questions jeopardizes the truth of its listeners. Lawful, Lawful Sanders and the station agreed to mutually part ways. Now you notice in this, the five scenes was talking to me. I'm asking myself all over the media, she's got this on. So I'm asking, hey, was this, was this, was the story true? Purple Phoenician. And she got this on. Is that black and white or blue and white? If it's black and white, that means you're playing both sides. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to stay with the context of the story. But here we go. When I ran for governor in California, I was told by media folks off camera and off mic that as much as they would love to ask me certain questions, to talk to me more about my campaign or air my campaign more, they would end up getting an angry phone call from the Newsom administration and they would get ejected from events if they ended up covering me any more than they already had. Did you hear that? Let's go back to this. This is Kevin. Let's see if I can get this right. Biden administration. Folks, this is not a Democrat or Republican issue. This I media folks off camera and to ask me certain questions campaign more, they would end up getting an angry folks off camera and off mic that as much as they would love to ask me certain questions, to talk to me more about my campaign or air my campaign more, they would end up getting an angry phone call from the Newsom administration and they would get ejected from events if they ended up covering me any more than they already had. The existing political elite control the media because think about it they have access to the events in fact i was doing an interview with one media station in san francisco inside of a biden event that i just walked into wasn't hiding who i was i just walked in they let me in i'm standing there in the back of the room giving an interview they kicked me and the reporter and the camera person out of the event that station did not get to cover the event because they're like, how dare you give airtime to our competitor? You're out of the event. Now, all of a sudden, all the other stations get to cover the incumbent, but the station that wanted to cover the truth, another perspective, does not. That's how So, Kevin, a very popular YouTuber, ran for governor back in the day against Newsom and other folks. And he was limited. And he couldn't ask certain questions. And this is also recent this is how bad it's got in america people and and the people who are already the incumbent the people who are already in office and i'm assuming it happens on both sides democratic republican they can persuade and i put that in quotes the media radio television newspaper if you let anybody else in a, a competitor we won't give you access to an event to interview in the future. That's a crime. Where is the checks and balances in America to monitor that? Baby. Get paid. Yes, I, I got several questions, eight of them, and the four that were chosen were the ones that I approved. To interview the President of the United States. Wisconsin radio host Earl Ingram also interviewed the President and said he received a list of four questions in advance. A spokesperson for the Biden campaign told CBS News, quote, we do not condition interviews on acceptance of these questions and hosts are always free to ask the questions they think will best inform their listeners. Word President and CEO Sarah Lomax confirmed Lawful Sanders' departure from the Black-owned talk radio station. Lomax said the interview was arranged and negotiated without the knowledge of management and quote, violates our practice of remaining an independent media outlet. Lomax went on to say work radio is not a mouthpiece for the Biden or any other administration. And a sort- Wow, tell you, 
Now I'm gonna cherry pick this. I'm gonna show you some 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 things that I were asked. Okay, let's start with 20 here. I'll start with four. Here we go. The vote of the black community matters intensely, intensely. Look, it makes up a significant portion of the American population. Who's gonna represent you but folks like me? Okay, that's Biden, one of Biden's response. Let's go down the list. Next, we'll go to 20. Four thirty-five. What else I got? All right, here we go. Thirty-five, thirty-three. You know what? I'm just gonna play the thing. How about if I just play the thing? Let me do that. Time to move forward with his campaign on the Earl Ingram show, uh, which is out of Wisconsin. He stressed how important Black voters are to this election. The vote of the Black community matters, and intensely intensely look it make up a significant portion of the american population who's going to represent you except folks like me uh and when talking about last week's debate the president admitted to the radio program the source he had a bad night is there any reason for the american people to be concerned no i had a bad debate <laughs> yeah i had a bad debate but 90 minutes on stage is does not erase what I've done for three and a half years. So that's what he's been saying all the time, right? Let's start at 118. I don't have too many seconds left for the copyright. Unfortunately, I did this wrong. Interview aired at six o'clock this morning. I began getting comments like, you just saved the democracy. You were patient, you were kind, you allowed him to speak, and we understood what he was saying uh, amidst the noise that we had been hearing about the fact that he was too old. So yeah, that's what her response. Now let me give you a perspective I put out this past week, coincidentally. I did a live titled, What Stephanopoulos Should Have Asked. George Stephanopoulos interviewed the President of the United States, Joe Biden, and uh, this is my opinion on what journalists should be doing. How you gonna deal with this? Why did you let immigration happen over here? That's what I want, look. I started to do a live show last night, but I was too tired. Cause I wanted to go on. George Stephanopoulos used to work in the White House. You know good and well he was told to ask certain questions. If I had President Biden by myself, oh yeah, he would have had a panic attack, straight up. Because I'd have been like, uh, Brother Joe, you said a couple years ago, you ain't black enough if you vote for Donald Trump. Okay? But Joe, you just let four million immigrants in Chicago and they're taking black jobs and they moving in black communities and they getting all this money and free money and free housing, Joe. Speak on that, Joe, in relation to a black man. That's what Stephanopoulos should have asked. And then after Joe grabbed his chest, I'd have been like, hold on, baby, don't pat it yet because we still got 20 more minutes to go. I just started the interview, but I need I need to go there, Joe. See, that's what needs to happen. That's an interview. Because everybody and their mama know that on any given day, Joe going to fall off the bike. He going to trip off a sandbag. He going to go into La La Land. We, all, we already seen three and a half years of that. We should be past them softball questions. I'm used to Geo taking him by the hand. What I want to know is, now that you brought all these illegals over here, and in the black community, 
are they going to start going to other communities? And is this a takeover of America? Because, Joe, you ain't going to be here when it finally go in full effect. Are they going to be voting soon, Joe? Are you going to give them jobs? And, and if you give them jobs, Joe, do you think that's going to be your base in this? Well, what do you mean, Stephanopoulos? Well, Joe, let me just cut to the chase. Aren't you indirectly buying a vote from the illegals if you're giving them free housing? That in a year, if they're allowed to vote, they're going to keep you in office? Come on, Joe, work with me. Hold on, don't go to a commercial. Don't go to a commercial. I need to talk to Joe right about now. See, this is why I'm telling y'all, they don't want us to think. And they don't want to have no representation at any level. They want to keep us stupid. That's what they want to do. So they omit certain questions, but yet they want to build it up. Oh, tonight, you got to get on there. Stephanopoulos, he going to interview the President of the United States, and he going he gonna to tell you he went to the doctor. Oh, Lord, he went to the doctor. I don't care how many doctors he went to. He went to the doctor. He fell asleep. This dude in the, in the show yesterday, what did I point out? He couldn't remember if he watched the debate afterwards. And as he was talking, he had to and then speak. So he was speaking without speaking. Anytime you got to and then say a word, you try to tell me that you got chest problems, respiratory issues. You let me know indirectly, hint, hint, something might happen to you in the future. See that? See, 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 see. They build this thing up one way, but you got to look at it for what they did. They showed you a breathless man. That's what they showed you. They showed you a man that couldn't remember everything. So they're controlling the narrative. They're controlling the news and they're, and they're omitting certain questions because they want to control the news. This is why YouTubers like me only get two and three thousand uh, 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 views. It ain't that my content ain't good. It's just that they don't want that out there. So they got a special algorithm to keep me limited. Because if y'all start thinking, baby, oh, it's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. If y'all start thinking, and I know y'all thinking, I I'm not hating on y'all. And that's the thing. They don't want us thinking, people. They don't want us thinking. All they want is for us to go along to get along. So shout out to this lady here. I pray she gets another job somewhere. I want to throw this in the mix. On April 15th, right here in Chicago, City of Chicago Council weighs mayors asked for $70 million in migrant funding. Cook County Board approved sending up to $70 million to Chicago, taking care of the migrants. That was April. You see, if we don't get to ask the right questions, if the media is controlled, if you have leaders, quote unquote, like Obama, saying what he said years ago, that we're too narrow-minded to govern our own affairs. You have to sit back and ask yourself, is this, is this America? This is not America anymore. And this lady, where are the black leaders right now with their I have a dream logic and speech saying, look, Give her a job back. Matter of fact, put him in one of them alphabet stations. Quadruple her salary for, for being bold. Where are the black millionaires? The basketball players? The football players? The entertainers? Where you at? How come they ain't... They, they, they can get a cable network for her. 
the P. Diddy's, the Jay Z's. Oh, yeah, I'm going to call all of them out. The Michael Jordans, all of them. Where they at? Somebody get a fund for her and put $500,000 in it so she can get two staffers and get her own radio station so she can ask more questions independently. Where they at? Black folk or any folk? Where you at? This is the new America. The three monkeys. The three monkeys. Old school. Three monkeys. Hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil. This is what's popping off. This is how they want America to be. Don't see nothing. Don't hear nothing. Don't, and you better not speak it. Because if you do, allegedly you're going to be forced to do what? Make a mutual decision and start all over. My name is Franchise Pearson. If you enjoy the work, thumbs up, share the thing. I go through the same thing. Other media people go through the same thing. We're going to have to endure. We're going to have to just hold on. God bless you and God bless America. And if you hear about something else similar to this, let me know. I'll do that story too. Prettiest lady makes it. Don't make no sense. Ask basic questions. We should be able to ask certain certain questions. And in my in my video, let me see what else I said. I, I believe I said that we should interview Stephanopoulos. Check it out. They know. The cat is out the bag. They ain't stupid. They've already done their uh, their forecasts and their projections. They know how we gonna think. So they are not gonna sit up here and let George Stephanopoulos ask certain questions that's gonna make you go out to the White House and say, wait a minute. Uh, Joe, this interview is far from over. Because I got some black friends and some other friends in their communities. And these folks getting a $1,000. And uh, they got cars. They got, they got hospitalization. And my daddy was in the uh, Vietnam War. Or he was in service for 10 years and lost a leg. And he living check to check. Matter of fact, my uncle, he, he lived he, he live in, live in a check, Joe. Stephanopoulos, you didn't do your job last night. Somebody need to interview the interviewer, as far as I'm concerned. Bingo. See, 